talking about how it, you know running a mile is if you run a five minute mile it's you know better than a twenty minute mile and well we would grant you that you'd be healthier right blood work would not be the same thing though and mm-hmm. that's a major concern it's just because you have increased your LDL or lower lowered your LDL that's not necessarily a better thing it's physiology has no free pass hormesis and other factors tell us we have curves of toxicity. And we can extend this to vitamin, we can extend this to, to any real part of physiology, but most of the time, there is no more is better, less is, is better thing. It, it's usually a curve. So there's some level of toxicity uh, or bad, and then if you get more, it tends to be better. But if you get too much, it tends to go back to being worse, and if you keep going, it tends to be toxic. So we can use any example you want. We will pick, um, since there's a lot of wind blowing right now, we'll pick air. <laughs> mm. Air well, seems like a good air one. Do I need my blood? <laughs> well, that's exactly the question, right? <laughs> so, oxygen is a very good example. I don't think any of you are willing to go 15 minutes without it, right? So, if you were out of air and I gave you a little bit of air, that would make your situation better. If I gave a little bit more, it'd make it better. If I gave a little bit more, it makes it better. But if I keep going, oxygen is the most toxic thing on the entire planet. It will fucking kill you. There's no difference here, right? That's a hermetic curve. That's a very basic thing. There is, everything has a toxicity dosage. Water is the same thing, right? If you're dehydrated and dying of thirst and I give you water, that makes you better. I give you a little bit more water, it's even better. But there's a thing called hyponatremia where if you drink too much water, you can die from that. So everything has a curve there. And in physiology, the problem with blood work and all those things is that exact thing. Is that If we don't know what normal is, I don't know where you are at on that curve. And so really, it's just a guess. It's an experiment. And your ratios are going to matter too. It's it's not to the, you, you can't just silo one marker and mm-hmm. say because it's a certain number that's a good thing. It, it depends on all, what all the the surrounding numbers that have an effect on that number are at as well. Yeah, think instead of thinking of of whether we're talking about an individual marker in our blood uh, or a protein or a signaling hormone, whatever, it doesn't just do one job. Like we tend we tend to personify physiology, and that's not the case. So testosterone does not cause muscle growth. Testosterone is just a fucking molecule. It's just a molecule. It does a bunch of different things. If you put it in a bunch of different medii, it will do different things. It has more than one action. And so when we tend to personify them and say, they're like, oh, this does that, no, because when you mix up the milieu and you change that, it has different functions. Right? Just like water is something you drink. No, water is water. You can drink it. You could do different things with it. It could be a lubricant. It could... Uh, manage it's temperature. It's, it's not a good lubricant for the record. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, ever, you ever try to have sex in a hot tub? Yeah, it's viscosity. Just, it just doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Too much viscosity. You, you, have well, you, you can do it. It's possible, but it's, it's possible. Not, not a good lubricant. Right. Anyway. Takes a minute. Boss, <laughs> is water a lubricant? See, thank you very much. Uh, it depends. The guy that that's runs whole, warships, Doug, he knows, <laughs> he knows more about water. About lubricants <laughs> and water. He's had sex in the ocean it can before. Be an insulator. <laughs> it can be an insulator and a conductor. Yeah, it's all those things, yeah. right? And so it has multiple functions. And physiology is really hard because when you um, think of it like this, imagine that there's water in a bowl in front of you. And you take your finger and you put your finger in that water. It doesn't just change the molecules you're touching. Right? It changes the whole picture in the landscape. You push your hand in there and it moves over. Now that, that bowl is a different shape. That's how physiology is. When you move one part, it doesn't just affect that part. Everything else changes around it. So when you move two parts, now multiple things. And that's an exponential change. So just like you said, we have cross-reactivity between everything. Hormones, uh, protein, signaling. All that is cross-reactivity. This is why when you have multiple vitamins, there's an, an interactive or a blocking effect. So some vitamins block other vitamins. They enhance absorption of other minerals. Right? Another, this is why we can't just live on taking exogenous hormones and minerals and not think we're paying any consequence. Uh, everything matters. So everything is everything like that. It, it's, it's, it, it is extremely complicated. If you look and Google a map of, say, signaling activity, you can see like a dumbed-down version where you're like, okay, AKT signals mTOR, which signals muscle growth. Kind of. If you look at the actual picture, there's 10,000 different signaling molecules that are responsible for that whole train. You just got the dumbed-down two-step version. Uh, and then when you move one and you don't realize, okay, actually AKT signals 85 other proteins that do growth, and it signals 30 that do muscle breakdown, and it does 80 that do nothing else related, and it signals 7,000 that do nothing related to that at all, you realize like it's not 